Hey everyone, my name is Tony Menito. I'm a general dentist who splits his week between teaching at a dental school, MUSC, and private practice, a place called Expertise Dental in Charleston, South Carolina. And I wanted to talk to you about uh, a workflow that I've been using quite a bit recently in my private practice. The, the dentist who is my boss, her name is Amanda C. She loves to do Invisalign. Um, this is something that's relatively new to me, but obviously Invisalign requires the iTero scanning for uh, using that digital workflow. Uh, I love chair-side milling on um, really a lot of different systems, but the advantage of milling with the plan mill is that it's an open milling system, which means you can move basically scans in and out of that system very easily. You can actually move design files in and out of that system very easily, so it allows for a lot of flexibility. So let's get started with this workflow. Basically, the really important thing when you're setting up a case in the iTero is to use chair-side milling as your case type. Now, this is not something that you will have in all likelihood when you purchase the scanner. You will likely have to call iTero customer care to have that added. They will ask you what milling system you are using. Plan Mecca is not one of the options. E4D is the correct answer to that question. Uh, e basically, the history is that E4D uh, used to make uh, Plan Mecca's mills, and I guess iTero hasn't quite caught up um, once Plan Mecca bought that company. Um, so anyway, E4D is the correct answer when they inevitably ask you what milling system you are using. Uh, if you accidentally pick restorative as the case, uh, it basically forces you to pick a lab to send that to. And once you send that case off, you do not have access to those STLs, only the lab. Now, I did this accidentally one of the first couple of times I was doing this and had to call the lab and basically have them send me the STL files. So it's not the end of the world, but it is a pain. Uh, chair side milling is what you want to what you want to use. Uh, you can also do things like select the tooth you're working on, if you're doing a crown or a veneer or whatever, pick which material, pick the shade, um, even preparation design, things like this. This is totally optional, uh, but I find that having some redundancy in this information is not a bad thing just in case um, that information is not able to be found in your, in your clinical record or something like that. Um, the other thing that you can do is... Um, there is a, a nice workflow using implant uh, restorative options that I like to use, uh, a company called True Abutment. Um, and what I, I'm able to do is basically scan a scan body. Um, so do the totally digital implant workflow with this. Uh, I send those uh, scans of the scan body, of the soft tissue scan, and of the opposing all off to True Abutment, and True Abutment makes me a um, basically a, a, a titanium uh, custom abutment and uh, sends it back to me. They will also design the crown file for me. Uh, because Plan Mecca is an open mill, it allows me to mill that um, Emacs crown in most cases on my mill. Um, so that saves me quite a bit of money. It ends up costing me about half of what I would pay to have a lab do the total. Uh, custom abutment and crown workflow. So that's also very nice. So when you scan on the iTero for a restorative workflow, basically it, it will prompt you to scan your preparation first. And you see those crosshairs on the scanning screen? Um, you basically want to have those over your preparation. You're telling the scanner, uh, basically, this is my prep. And um, in this first scan, all you really need to do is try to get as much good detail on your preparation as possible. I'm told this scans at a little bit of high, higher level of uh, detail uh, and accuracy. So it's a good thing. You don't need the contacts in this scan, but you do want to make sure you have the entirety of your prep. You can see that green dot on top of the prep. You can click and drag that uh, onto your prep if it's on a different tooth. Um, but it's very important that at the end of this sequence that that green dot is on your preparation. Um, if you have any missing data, it's good to go back and capture that. Uh, and then you're going to scan the rest of the arch. Um, basically, at this point, you want to try to get all the proximal contact data to make sure that you're able to build an accurate contact. 
Here we are scanning our opposing, uh, making sure we have plenty of information on the buckle so that we can align everything within the bite tab as we are doing here. Now in this case, the occlusion wasn't that important, but um, nevertheless, you wanna make sure you have uh, all your information complete. Itero gives you this nice kind of color-coded map as far as um, distance between your prep and the antagonist, and you can change the scale of that. I like to put it at the lowest scale. I, I generally do bonded Emax, which means that I only need about a millimeter of room between the prep and the opposing tooth. Uh, this helps me to evaluate my prep right off the bat. If I need to go back and scan uh, after reducing a little bit more, I can do that. Uh, once you're happy with your preparation, you're gonna send the file. And at this point, you're gonna jump onto the laptop that you have set aside for your design software. Either That will either be Romexis or Design Center. Um, you will log on to the iTero portal on this website first, because we need to get the STLs, okay? And this is very simple. You basically just pull up the case and you hit export. And you see how it's labeled as E4D up there? That, that is the setting. So when iTero asks you what milling system you're using, E4D is the equivalent of Plameca in this case. So that's the one you want to select. Uh, it will start the download process, but you wanna make sure you click Save As because you wanna specify where this file is going. I have a folder on the desktop for all my CAD CAM cases. I will add the patient's name. In this case, I'm just gonna say iTero Demo is the patient name. You click on that folder and that is the location that you want those STL files to go. Now it will not export in, S in just the STLs, it exports a lot of different things. So when you open this file, there's actually a zip file that is there and you need to, you cannot import a zip file into Romexis. So you need to actually um, segregate those two scans, all right, here as the lower and the upper scan, segregate those. What I do is just click and cut those, move them into an area that is a, an equivalent level with the zip file, and that makes it easier for you to import them when the time comes. This is a very important step. Uh, if you don't do this, you will find it very difficult to import. All right, so here we are in Romexis. We are going to, we have already added a patient. All right, now we are going to import, and you can see the import button there at the top left. Uh, you hit import and then you hit CAD CAM STLs for design. It will bring up this window and you see they're labeled as prep and opposing. And this is really important to note because in this case, it's not maxillary mandibular, it is prep and opposing. So in this case, the prep is the lower arch. So we're gonna click on that first. And the opposing is the maxillary. Okay, so once we have those selected, we just hit done and it will begin the process of opening those STLs to allow for our design work. So there, that is basically the crux of the workflow right there. I'm going to continue through and just show you what it is to design in Romexis. I've been using this design software for many years and I find it, I find it very easy to use, to be honest. Um, I will say that the one, there are two main um, downfalls to this workflow. One is that the STLs that are imported are, are basically black and white. STL is a, is a black and white file. There is no color associated, so you do lose the color that you would have gotten um, in your original iTero scan. The other is that Romexis has a really powerful tool called the pre-op tool um, that you can use for, say, designing on a single central or if you have a tooth that you are repairing that is um, an abutment for a partial denture and you want to save that anatomy from, you know, from where the clasps engage or a guide plane or something like that, um, the, the pre-op tool is very, very helpful for that. But since we uh, are just able to import two STLs, the prep and the opposing, we're not able to import a third pre-op scan STL. My understanding is that is being worked on um, to allow that capability, but for the time being, we are not able to do that. So two, two downfalls to this workflow. And here you are looking at Plan Mecca's 30S mil. I call it pinky. 
Uh, I really like this mill. It's a single spindle mill that'll give you mill times anywhere from about nine to 12 minutes, uh, nine minutes for premolars and 12 for molars. Uh, I've been using it for a few years. I really, really like it. Um, so just to wrap things up, if you have an iTero, if you're doing Invisalign, but you're thinking about adding uh, a CAD CAM capabilities, um, Plan Mecca milling unit and their design software is actually really nice. So I would highly recommend it. From an efficiency standpoint, it's it's a few only a few minutes slower than than using an, an inherent scanner like Plan Mecca's Emerald S within Romexis itself. Um, so there is a, a little bit of a, of a increased time factor, but it's very slight. Um, and if you already have the iTero scanner and you're looking to add a mill, uh, I would seriously consider this workflow. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, uh, shoot me an email. My email is my last name, Manito, A, at musc.edu. Uh, I'll be happy to help you uh, however I can.